There are a few interesting apps that I've been wanting to highlight in a video, so here they are. I recently covered a service called Bionic Reader. This is a service that helps people comprehend what they're reading better by balding certain parts of the words and leaving other parts of the words normal. It's very strange to talk about. I don't fully get the science behind it, but it totally works for me. I struggle comprehending re when I'm reading something. I have to read things multiple times a lot. This is totally right up my alley. It totally works for me. Uh, and I've been using it as a part of the Reader app lately. Literally a couple of days after I posted my video, I saw in the Mac Stories Discord somebody post about this app called Speed Reader for Safari. It's a Safari extension. And it takes websites on Safari and basically applies Bionic Reader to them. It does a really good job. So uh, if you're reading a blog or a news article or something like that, it'll apply the Bionic Reading setting. It does a really good job at detecting when it should do this and when it shouldn't. So like if you're buying something on uh, Apple's website or something like that, it doesn't turn it on. But if you're reading a blog post from, well, just Mac Stories, uh, it does turn it on. So it's it's really good at kind of figuring out when it should and shouldn't turn it on. Now there is one big downside. It struggles with links. So in blog posts or news articles or whatever, you will see, you know, oftentimes blue text with an underline uh, saying, hey, this is this is a link. You can tap on this and it's gonna link out to something else it just destroys those. You just don't see those. Uh, and that basically breaks the web for me because I read a lot of websites that link to other stuff. So that's not great. I, I hope the developer can get that sorted out so that's not an issue anymore. Uh, but other than that, if you really like Bionic Reading, go check this out. Doomark is a task manager meets bookmark manager. In my last video, I was talking about how I'm using Good Links to kind of like be a bookmark manager for stuff more than just articles. Good Links is really designed to be a read it later app, not so much a bookmarking app. Well, I was looking around more, like I thought I scoured the app store and found, you know, tried out all the different bookmarking apps and, and read it later apps and stuff like that. But there was one that slipped through my fingers and that is Doomark. Doomark's let you save links from anywhere. It can be Safari, it can be an RSS reader, it could be Twitter, it could be the app store, wherever. There is a share sheet extension that you just go through, you add whatever link you want to the app. You can then tag those links so you can organize things really well. So I have things organized for keyboards or the 2022 beta period or apps to check out, like all sorts of different tags to kind of help keep things organized. But then there's actions and actions are a really cool idea. So you have tags for what things are, but actions are what you're doing with this thing. So is it something you need to read? Is it something you need to watch? Is it something you want to go buy? So you can filter stuff by actions, not just tags. So I could have a, a, an action for watch something, but a tag for YouTube, a tag for uh, my website, a tag for whatever. But when I hit watch, it'll bring in all those videos. I think that's pretty neat. And then when you're done with a bookmark, you can just check the box next to it. This is the kind of task manager-esque style to it. Uh, and it moves into a completed section. I use this completed section just like I was using the red section in Good Links. Basically, it means I am done with this, but hey, it doesn't go away. It doesn't get deleted, so I can always go back and reference it in the future. So like when I'm done with all the 2022 beta stuff, like iPad OS 16, iOS 16, all that stuff, I'll mark all of those completed. They'll still stay in due marks, so I can reference them back next year but they're not in that active section. They're not like being in the in the tags if I look at certain tags or certain actions or stuff like that. Overall, it, this is exactly what I want out of a read it later app and a bookmarking app. It's got great organization. Uh, it's got support for deep links. If I add something via the app store or Twitter or something else, it'll use deep links to detect, hey, this is the app store URL. Instead of opening in Safari and then you having to open in the app store, it just goes right to the app store, which is really nice. Over the summer, I like to switch back to the built-in productivity, first-party productivity apps. So notes, calendars, reminders. That way I can talk about them in my iPad OS walkthrough videos. One of my major issues though with reminders is how long it takes to input a task, especially if you wanna add like due dates or put it into a project or tag or subtask. There's no natural language input for it. There's a lot of buttons and menus that you gotta jump through. Reminders could really just be flushed out to be a lot faster. 
But that's where Remind Me Faster comes in. So Remind Me Faster, the whole app is dedicated to one thing, adding tasks to the Reminders app. It has natural language input, so you can say like, take out trash tomorrow at 9 a.m. and it'll put a task in Reminders for 9 a.m. tomorrow to take out the trash. Really nice. There's buttons underneath it if you don't like using the natural language stuff. So there's like preset buttons so you can set up like 6 a.m. or 9 a.m. or noon or 6 p.m., whatever you want. Like you can set up all those different things. Then there are like uh, time increments so you could add time to that as well. And then at the top, when you're adding a reminder, you can quickly change the area that that reminder is going to be put into. So you can just tap on that and select the project area, select it, and it'll be saved there. And there's even a setting that you can use to open the Reminders app. So you can input something, then hit it, and then go right into the Reminders app. Or if you want to use this as the front end for the Reminders app, you can put this on your home screen and then tap that to get into Reminders. There isn't a lot of third-party apps I would say this about, but I really want Apple to buy Remind Me Later and just take the functionality of it and put it in Reminders. It would make Reminders so much better. Just, just buy that app and make it better. Because the, the way you're inputting reminders into reminders right now is not great. Calendars by Riedel got a really nice update. It's now on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac as a universal app. It's all, it's all together, uh, which is really nice. And I really like what Riedel has done with calendars. I haven't used it in a while, but I wanted to check back in on it. Uh, and it's gotten a really nice design lately. I really like its different views. It hooks in with reminders. So not only do you see all your, your calendar events, but you also see all the tasks that are due for that day or whatever day you're looking at. And you can mark them as complete right from calendars. If you're somebody that likes to see everything in one spot, this is perfect for that. It also has natural language input for adding calendar events. And it's also got a really nice design if you're adding like a video call link or adding people to the calendar event or if you just want to put some notes in there. It's really good at that. After the beta period is over and I'm kind of, you know, done with the iPad OS 16 walkthrough video, that's usually when I kind of like start to reassess what apps I'm going to be using for the next year or up until the next beta period. And honestly, right now, calendars is kind of winning for the calendar slot. I like the idea of like having all my reminders and calendars in one place. I really like the design. Natural language input is a big must have for me. It just has more features that I care about that the built-in calendars app doesn't have. This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is a matte screen protector that adds a texture to your iPad. So when you're using the Apple Pencil and you're drawing or writing on your iPad, it has a pencil and paper-like feel. It doesn't have that plastic on glass feeling that I really dislike. And because it's a matte screen protector, you can use your iPad outside and it helps cut down on the sunlight's reflection. So if you've ever been outside with your iPad, even the iPad Pros, they're not quite bright enough to work out in direct sunlight. A matte screen protector helps with that. Not perfect, but it helps. There's also a bundle now, so you can get the Paperlike, the Paperlike screen cleaner, and the pencil grips, which is kind of a really nice combo. You know, they all work together. I especially really like the screen cleaner. Uh, it just helps keep your Paperlike looking fresh and it just makes it last longer. So my thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video and the channel. IA Writer is the next app up. This is a markdown text editor that's great for writing blog posts or scripts or anything else that's long form. Since I went back to using notes over the summer, I needed something that I could write all my scripts and ad copies and all the long form stuff that I do in. And I like to try other apps out, so I wanted to like kind of just take a break from drafts for a minute. And right around this time, I was kind of figuring all this stuff out. IA Writer uh, had a beta and that I got on, and they have a big update that they just put out. So I wanted to try all those features out. And honestly, it's really nice. So I've been using IA Writer for all my long form writing, writing scripts, including my iPad OS 16 walkthrough video, ad reads like the one I just did, and so many of other things. What's nice is it's extremely fast for work to end. Because it's a plain text editor, you don't have to worry about rich text stuff. It's just incredibly fast and lightweight to work in. 
something I really like about it is it saves all the files to the documents app. So if I decide in the future, okay, I'm done with IA Writer, let's try something else. I can import those files really easily. It also supports changing the default extension so when you create a new file. Uh, so I have mine set to .md or a markdown files because I write everything in markdown. Even when I handwrite things, I sometimes write it in markdown. In that new update that I just mentioned, it got wiki style linking. So you can do the two open brackets, type the name of another document, and then it'll autofill those two closed brackets. Then you can tap on that and it'll jump to that document. Unfortunately, it didn't get backlinking like uh, Obsidian or I believe Notion has it. Uh, a lot of other apps have it. Backlinking is kind of like the other half of the feature. Wiki linking to me is, is only half of it. You need backlinking also because once you jump to a document, you need to be able to go backwards as well. So uh, I would like to see that in the future, but it is nice that it has that wiki style linking. On the iPad now, you can now split the preview so you can have your text editor on one side and then you can have it rendered out on the right side so you can see how it would look in like rich text format. Tags can now be added anywhere. These are really nice. I've been using these for to like break up the different kinds of stuff I'm writing, but also like active stuff and archive stuff. And there's now a lightning menu for some of your favorite actions so you can quickly get to them. There's a lot of really cool stuff in IA Writer. If you do a lot of long form writing, especially in a plain text or a markdown format, I highly recommend checking out IA Writer. The next app, I can't remember if I've ever talked about it. And honestly, it would be a crime if I haven't. I tried like searching through my videos, but I didn't see it anywhere. But that is Tot. Tot is this lightweight note-taking scratch pad app. I wouldn't even call it a note-taking app. I would just call it a scratch pad app. Like, you know how like some people keep like a notebook just to quickly jot down like a phone number or address or something on their desk? That's what Tot is. Like, this is where you quickly jot down stuff. And with iPadOS 16 and Stage Manager, I truly believe like Tot is going to be one of those apps people will use all day long. They will just leave it up on their screen in the different workspaces. Uh, I, I seriously think Tot is going to be a really big deal with iPadOS 16. So the idea behind it is there's seven pages you can jump across. I, I like that it's limited to seven because it does. It forces you to like not have hundreds of notes. If you, then it becomes a note taking app. Again, this is a scratch pad app, not a note taking app. So having that kind of limited set really is just like, okay, this is for temporary stuff. And if it becomes more than temporary, I need to move it to my note taking app. In my case, that would be notes right now. Throughout my day, if I get a phone number or something, I could just add it here. I can add addresses. I can add stuff I need to look up or like, st like templates or something I'm saving or need later. That's kind of what I would use Tot for. RuneStone is the last app. RuneStone is a text editor with support for a lot of different languages. What I mean by that is like HTML, JavaScript, that kind of stuff. And it hooks right into the Files app. So if you have any pre-existing files, you can open them right from the Files app into RuneStone. Or if you wanna create a new file, you can create it right there uh, in the Files app, essentially in the Files view, create, create the file and edit it right in RuneStone. So if you do a lot of like writing code, uh, like for me right now, I'm working on my website. This is something I've been using as an example for probably the last year because I am still working on it very slowly. Uh, but I'm using RuneStone now. I was using Textastic, but I really like RuneStone. The thing that kind of has won me over is its files focus because I do work primarily from the iPad that does make a lot of my work files focused. So that just makes things a lot smoother and a lot adds less friction to my setup. I can open documents, not just from iCloud, but from working copy so I can edit stuff on my website right there. And if you support the app, there's a fun little mini game that's reminiscent of a classic iOS game in the settings menu. Highly recommend checking it out. So that's some iPad apps I've been using and testing out. Let me know in the comments below like what your current favorite iPad app is or what like the new jewel of your iPad that you have found. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.